Our today's webinar is dedicated to server-based software number K and to access control and parking management in particular. My colleagues, Serhi Datko and Patrick Leyland, will represent to you this software and will advise about the most popular features. Meanwhile, uh, I will take three minutes of your time to represent the company who is vendor of this software. The name of the company is FF Group. And we are very focused on what we are doing only for number plate recognition and MMCR. MMCR is abbreviation for make, model, color, and type of a vehicle recognition. The company started the business in 16 years ago. We've got some 11 years in NPR technology of our own, the experience. And six, for the last six years, we have been developing our applications also at the edge on the camera processors. So at the bottom of this slide, you can see that we've got server-based applications for license plate recognition. And this is number OK. <clears throat> Apologies. That is uh, our focus for today, but we also have applications on cameras for Mobotics, Axis, Hanwha, and security and safety things that was remained renamed uh, just yesterday as Asena. Um, and we do both number plate recognition and make and model recognition on the camera processors embedded and on the server. For the region that we cover, we cover Europe, former Soviet Union, Canada, uh, the United States of America, all 50 states and one library with the state names, uh, some countries uh, in APEC region, uh, Asia and Oceania, uh, several countries in Africa, and also our latest LPR region is JCC. Uh, we are very focused on developing and finalizing the customization of make and model recognition for the United States. And this also includes the rare view recognition of the make and model. That is very important for the United States. Our next step will be Mexico and uh, Latin American countries, mainly Mercosur. For our algorithm, uh, we feature over 97% of vehicle detection and over 95% of license plate recognition accuracy. However, please mention that we count this accuracy percentage out of all vehicles count. And if you simply multiply, uh, you could get the uh, same percentage like 98 accuracy out of detected vehicles, okay? But in all our documentation, you will see uh, the guaranteed over 95% accuracy in number plate recognition and over 90 in make, model, and color recognition. A reminder, for the United States of America, we target uh, sometime at the end of November, start of December, where we could present make and model for the market. Uh, this is the map. Uh, that features our presence worldwide. I will not stop here. And again, back to number K, okay, to our today's topic. Uh, the model range of number K okay includes several models. Each of them is available just like plain license plate recognition or with make and model recognition. For today, we offer to you to get acknowledged with number OK SMB. SMB star stands for small and medium business. And at this point, I will uh, uh, pass on my screen to Patrick. Patrick, are you here? The screen is yours. Yes, I'm just uh, just loading it now. Thank you. Okay, going into view and presents. Okay, so it should be visible now. 
So uh, um, good morning uh, for everybody uh, joining us in the United States. My name is Patrick Wayland, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be taking over from my colleague Alexandra presenting on the number OK small medium business, the making make model and color recognition. However, uh, the <clears throat> FF group does offer uh, other packages uh, based on the size of the uh, of the projects uh, with uh, all the way to number OK meta working with uh, the Hanwha and, uh, and Axis cameras. So. So uh, vehicle access control and parking management. So uh, some of the things we're going to cover uh, today. So the basic, uh, the basic access control and the uh, double access con uh, access control. Uh, it's going to be a demonstration of that uh, after my uh, my explanation. Some key things to note, though, for the uh, installation uh, of the software that no uh, USB. Uh, no dongle is required uh, for installation and can be uh, used for virtual uh, machines. And unlike many competitors, uh, all features of, uh, of the number of case software are available for 30 days. So this can give uh, yourself or perhaps uh, your clients uh, more uh, accuracy as to which uh, features are the most uh, relevant uh, to, to their project. Uh, the, the channels that are offered on the software are preset numbers. Uh, the video channels, so anything from 1 to 36, but please note that uh, these numbers are preset. Uh, so if there's a client or a project that involves uh, or wants 15 channels, uh, 16 channels uh, would need to be uh, ordered or, or perhaps 20. Uh, so important notes uh, on that. And for the uh, free fe full feature demo, also very important. This is uh, conditional on the uh, standard or the uh, constant in internet access. So if there's something like Wi-Fi outage or a power outage, this can affect uh, the demo. This needs to be a constant uh, connection for that 30-day period. So uh, some examples we're going to be going over of uh, how um, uh, the SMB uh, number OK software is used uh, in the field. Uh, so anything from your basic access control. So this can be the allowed and banned uh, license plates. Uh, so very, very simple, you're allowed or you're not. Uh, also, it could be done by a preset time allowance. Uh, so this is going to be very useful for parking garages, um, which is a standard that you give two hours uh, for free. Or it could also be a delivery area where a vehicle might only have 15 minutes to deliver their goods and then are set to, uh, set to leave. Uh, access control by available parking spaces. Uh, so very uh, key uh, <clears throat> key uh, criteria for, for this, which is going to be uh, accurate measures of uh, how many parking spaces uh, are available. And of course, double access control. So this could be that a vehicle is allowed uh, not only by the license plate, but also the make, model, and color and type uh, recognition, uh, which could be used to prevent uh, anything from unwanted vehicles on a premises to uh, to terrorist attacks, uh, where uh, an offender could try to use uh, a stolen uh, stolen license plate and put it to another vehicle to gain access to a perimeter, but uh, that'll be prevented by the double access control. So in the first the black white listed plate, an illustration, uh, as you see here in the, in the center, there's just a simple entrance gates, uh, one camera at the, at the entrance, one at the exit. And uh, this is going to be done in one of the modes of the software. So also important to note that there is an access control mode, or a checkpoint mode, and a parking mode. And they're going to have uh, different features. A parking mode is going to offer more features than the uh, simple checkpoint mode. But in this case, in checkpoint mode, a vehicle pulls into the, to the gate. It's recognized, the gate opens, it passes through, and the same upon, uh, upon leaving. So with make and model color recognition, uh, this can be uh, a little bit deeper uh, recognition so that it would not only, not only recognize the plates, but also the vehicle and uh, any mismatches uh, can be uh, or will be alerted uh, to, the, to the central database. And uh, my colleague later is going to go into what type of alerts uh, one can get anything from email to uh, an alarm uh, going off. So this could be used also um, in a combined entrance and exit. Uh, this isn't so common, uh, but if there is a case where there's only one lane for both entrance and exit, uh, you can have two channels. So one camera allowing uh, the vehicle in and the other camera to monitor uh, the exit. 
So access control by preset allowance time. So same concept, vehicle pulls up, it's allowed in. Uh, this one, it's going to be uh, open the barrier for all vehicles. So this is going to be more customary in uh, shopping malls, uh, for instance. So any vehicle that pulls up is allowed in, but then you know you need to take a ticket and you get a preset uh, time allowance that could be free. Usually it's two hours, but then otherwise it's going to require payment. Um, this does not connect, though, to a payment system. So uh, the uh, number OK SMB is not going to connect to uh, verify by Visa or, or any of those things for payment. That's going to be a separate system. Uh, up to 1 million plates can be recognized uh, by the system, so 1,000 groups. So you could set groups like delivery vehicles, uh, different types of customers, residents, et cetera. Each, each one of those groups can be up to a thousand plates, which could give you up to a million uh, in total. So much more than uh, most customers uh, would ever need. So about the available parking spaces, and uh, this is, we're gonna use ten, two cameras uh, at the uh, entrance, two cameras at the exit. So this could be an allowed and uh, banned list. So this is especially useful for uh, residential complexes. Uh, can be used for uh, for shopping malls or ports and, and, and other uh, type of perimeters as well. So uh, this is going to be in parking mode, not in the uh, checkpoint mode. This is going to be a little bit more uh, complex. So the first camera upon entrance, uh, as shown here, uh, will scan the license plate and can do the make and model uh, color recognition uh, necessary in the, in the advanced package, and that will uh, open the barrier. Now, what's important about the second camera is that it can be shown if the vehicle actually entered the space or not. So there could be cases where, and I've done this personally, I pull up to a parking garage and then the price list is shown and I'm saying I'm not going to pay that. So I will just back away and go find somewhere else to park. Uh, and in this case, it would only be recorded that uh, the vehicle arrived but did not actually enter. Uh, and in this case, uh, if somebody pulls away, uh, if you only have one camera, it's going to show that the parking space has been taken. You have one less uh, in the parking lot when that is not actually true. That space could be used or could have been used for somebody else. It's the same upon exiting. So the camera would uh, scan and allow the vehicle uh, to leave. And then a second camera would do the, uh, the verification as to whether the vehicle actually left and then calculates uh, the number, the, the more correct number of parking spaces available. So some of the capabilities uh, of, of list management, so up to a thousand groups of uh, vehicles, which I've already mentioned. So this could be anything from different categories of delivery vehicles to different categories of residents. It could be doctors for hospitals, doctors, nurses, guests, uh, et cetera, many different possibilities and up to 1 million listed vehicles uh, in total. Now for the description of the listed vehicles, uh, in addition to license plates, you have other, uh, the make, model and color, but also the owner. Uh, so you, there could be a case where one owner has several cars registered to their name. Uh, it's especially true in residential complexes where you have residents with multiple vehicles. And so this would be uh, very effective so that that owner can register both of their vehicles with the central database, usually the authority of the building, the condo association uh, or, or anything similar, and then uh, will be allowed access for both cars. Now, the import of exported license plates is possible. So if, for example, there is a, a, somebody moving out uh, and they are deregistering from, from a complex, if somebody goes in the banned list, if there's a, something court ordered, like a restraining order, somebody's not allowed to be in a certain area by court orders, the, the software can be configured to comply with any of those court orders. So you can import new license plates, uh, perhaps for new residents or new allowed vehicles, new delivery vehicles, et cetera, uh, or you can export them and get rid of them if they are banned or no longer relevant. So to go into a little bit detail more about the uh, types of modes uh, that are available, uh, this isn't the exclusive list, but the most common we're gonna be talking about today. So the access control mode and the parking mode. In the relevance to the uh, checkpoint mode, so this can open a barrier for uh, listed plates. So you can have your, your uh, allowed and, uh, and banned lists, so anything preset. You can open a barrier according to a preset schedule. For example, delivery vehicles might only be allowed at a certain time. It might be allowed a certain number of entrances. This is the case in the uh, Prague airport where even taxi drivers are only allowed one entrance 
15 minutes for free every 24 hours. So the, the, that one entrance can be calculated uh, using the software as well. And the, as I mentioned, time allowances can be combined, you know, the one entrance for 15 minutes uh, or a time allowance. So um, also in port security, uh, this has been uh, implemented as well, where a vehicle might only be allowed in and out to keep the traffic flow at a port uh, without any hindrance and can calculate the time spent within the parking area, but this is only going to be after the vehicle has uh, already left. And there's going to be a key difference in that with the parking mode. So as we go into parking mode, um, most commonly it's used for occupancy uh, calculation, uh, management of, uh, of shopping centers and of, uh, business centers, et cetera. So you can have uh, your uh, calculation per preset vehicle group. Uh, this could be in the case of uh, rest areas on the highway where you might have only a certain number of for a set aside for trucks and a certain number of uh, parking spaces for uh, passenger vehicles. And uh, they could be uh, set up accordingly and calculated accordingly. Uh, but one of the key differences though, in, in, in terms of the managing uh, of the parking time allowance in parking mode versus access control mode, is that in parking mode, you can see how long a vehicle has been in the parking spot uh, currently. So if you wanted to check how long this red vehicle here has been sitting in the parking lot, uh, that can be done. And you can see if that vehicle has uh, much exceeded its time allowance or not. If it's necessary to call a towing vehicle uh, to get removed, uh, that could be done if necessary. And so for the mode choice, and uh, after this, I'm going to be, um, after one more, I'm going to be handing over to, uh, to my colleague, Sergi. But you see in here, there's the uh, different modes. So you can add anything from the basic recognition, so a simple license plate recognition, to the uh, checkpoint mode, to uh, parking mode. Now, we did not cover today traffic rules. That's going to be, uh, according to the public sector, uh, private's not going to be uh, using that. But uh, one more example, or actually uh, two more examples is uh, kind of a, to finish this up about the parking mode versus the access control mode. Uh, parking mode, you could have a one-way, one or two-step uh, verification, probably better is two-step. So uh, you have that vehicle approaching, uh, it's allowed in, and then it's actually controlled whether the vehicle entered or not, and, uh, and the same upon exit. In the access control mode, it's one-step verification. So this requires less channels, less cameras uh, uh, as, as the previous parking mode. Uh, but you know, only a one-step verification if the, the vehicle's or the barrier is open, and then the barrier opens again for the exit. And in both and in both modes, one or two-step verification. So that first camera can be used to allow it in, and that's it. Or it can be the two-step verification where this uh, camera scans and allows the vehicle in, and that second camera uh, does a second verification to make sure that the vehicle actually entered and then actually exited. So a, a more accurate representation. So here's a visual, uh, a visual of that. So pulling up uh, the one, uh, the one lane with the two-step verification. And uh, parking mode versus access control mode. Only a few of these uh, listed are actually available. And all all features are listed in parking mode, but not all of them are going to be. Uh, in the uh, access control mode, only only several of the features. Uh, last example here, uh, parking mode, you, you just, uh, check your results. So in this total allowed on parking, uh, in the parking lot five, but you have here a subcategory. You have the unknown and you have a list once, so you have a preset list. Uh, this could be uh, an example of a hospital uh, where you have doctors that are have uh, their assigned parking spaces. So they're on list one. So there's one vehicle from list one and then four uh, hospital guests uh, that are just visiting for a set a set duration and you can check the duration, uh, how, how long that they have been here. And so from here, I'm gonna be stopping my screen share and my colleague Serhi is going to take over. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. And hello, everybody. Let me share my screen. I will just show you how it looks in real life. Yes, second screen. Uh, yes, now I hope you could see. Uh, so once again, today we are talking about our server-based application number, okay? 
yeah and i'm going to show you how how it exactly looks like what, what functionality it's already have and how to configure checkpoint and parking mode so here it's totally easy uh, in general view you could just see the live view from the cameras and you could see that we uh, recognized a license plate we show on the overlay of the video stream then when you switch to result top here you will be able to see the list with all recognized license plates so exactly here you could find out the date and time of recognizing uh, you can find out the recognized license plate, information about direction of vehicle, and information about from which camera this license plate we get. So uh, here we show the channel. So it mean video channel where this license plate was recognized. Uh, also, we show the zone. You could configure up to four recognition zones on one camera. For example, if you have, uh, if you already install your camera on the highway and you have uh, at least two lanes, uh, so you could configure two separate uh, recognition zone and uh, you will get in results information additional about the zone. Uh, also, you could find out here some technical data and information about the country and district. If you now need some information just to, uh, for the right mouse button click, you could hide some information. For example, let's hide some technical data. Okay. Uh, then here in our in-car database, you could add, you could create your lists. Uh, we call also it a group of the vehicles. So here, for example, I create some specific groups, access allowed, stolen vehicles and visitors. That's just for example. And also here, you're able to manage your access control for this group. For example, for, for visitors, I configured some uh, extended access and I just enable uh, duration 30 minutes for our visitors. Then in vehicles, you will need to add your license plate uh, and also assign it to some specific group. Uh, so you have uh, several ways to add your license plate to, to our uh, database. So you could add it directly from the user interface. For example, let's add some license plate yep uh, you need to input your license plate without the spaces and also here you could add some additional information about the owner of the vehicle for example owner of the vehicle uh, could be i sorry uh, but this car will be driven by my wife for example so i uh, i could also add information about the owner of the vehicle and, for example, for car users. Uh, also, uh, we we are able to add some description to this license plate. Uh, we could add some context of uh, vehicle owner. Um, also, you have the possibility to import uh, license plate to number of keys database directly from the uh, simple XML file. Uh, for this, you first of all you could uh, export from from the number case okay, some example. Let's wait while it exporting. Uh, then, when you export this example, you could just add all your license plate to this list and just input it to number okay, and it will be updated. Also, here in number K. Okay, uh, in car database tab, you are able to set up some reactions. I will talk about it a little bit later. Uh, then let's go to our reports. So all information that you see in recognition results, you could see also in reports. So you could generate any report and you will get uh, all the same information about date and time, about the vehicle license plate, about direction, state, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And you could export this information also to XML file. Oh, I export it and I get all work of recognized license plate here in XML file. Yeah, and also you can find out here in uh, reports some consolidated results. 
So we can find information here about the total number of vehicles, uh, also uh, total information uh, for each uh, video channel. And let's go to our settings. Let's start from the general. Uh, so here in general settings, you can find the all all the information about the, your license and here you're able to choose your operation mode of the number k so when you have number k smb version it also depends from your type of electronic license you are able in smb version you are able to choose the mode between recognition so it's just basic mode uh, you, you will be able only see the result and you will have some possibility to integrate number K to third party system. But in SMB, you are able to choose between checkpoint and parking mode. So when we choose checkpoint mode, also here in the settings, checkpoint tab will be available for us. But uh, let's start from the connection. So here in connection tab, you are able to connect your video cameras. To the number k okay. so we need to connect uh, video stream to number k okay. so you have uh, several possibilities you could connect uh, your ip video camera via rtsp stream uh, also you have a possibility to connect um, uh, some dvrs for example from vision deho and here also in this uh, tab you could choose uh, you could connect Axis camera via the own native protocol. Also, you're able to connect to here a uh, Mobotics camera with the specific uh, uh, MXPEC protocol. And also very interesting feature in number K, you're able to play some recorded video file in number K. So it could be useful, for example, for some tests. You could ask your customer to provide your uh, just recorded video from uh, his installed video cameras and you could play it in number K and just check will it fit for the recognition or not. So for this demonstration, I also using this feature and I'm playing video for you. And uh, and also you could find out here uh, some configuration parameters. So we have specific filter for license plate size. Uh, our recommendation for the license plate width is uh, more than 130 pixels. Uh, so you could check it, just make a print screen or just uh, import the image from your camera, put it to some, I don't know, Microsoft Paint and with uh, standard instrument, just measure your license plate width. Uh, also, you could find the information uh, with real license plate size in results. So I was showing you that I hide some technical data, but we'll back there and I will show how to find this information and to check your real license plate size. Uh, also here, you could set up recognition sensitivity by the default, it's set up to 50%. But when you get in result some trash recognition or a lot of mistakes, uh, then you should increase, increase your recognition sensitivity because the normal one is more than 65%. I will also show you how to find the real uh, recognition uh, hit rate in uh, technical data. And also here you are able to set up direction angles. So you could see this arrow moving. Uh, we have inbuilt algorithm for detecting vehicle direction and some additional specific parameter for number plate lost. Uh, if you have a situation when somebody is top uh, directly into your camera and state, for example, for 30 seconds, if you do not want to get uh, several uh, same results, you just increase this parameter for example, for 30 seconds. And then in results, you will just get this, uh, one result. Okay, uh, so if we are talking about SMB version and checkpoint uh, control and parking management, uh, we need to configure our checkpoint. So here in checkpoint tab, you exactly need to configure a checkpoint. So everything, very simple, you just need to choose video stream, video channel, uh, exactly the camera, uh, which installed uh, 
into the entry. You need to choose the camera which installed for the exit. Uh, also, you need to set up access level here for this camera. For example, for the entry, we uh, we set up automatic access to a terrorized. So it means that all vehicles from our uh, database will be will have access without any permissions. Uh, and for exiting vehicles, uh, we just set up access for all vehicles except of denied. So uh, what possibilities do you have? You could choose denied access to all, automatic access to all, automatic access only to authorized, only from our database and access to all except denied. And also here you are able to configure operating of your barrier, for example. But for operating the barrier, you need to connect uh, your input output device. Uh, you are able to configure it here in integration mode. So here in integration, in, uh, you will need to connect your input output device. We already integrated with some specific vendors. So you could find out here ICP does, some barracks, other modules. Also, if you, yeah, it's just a short list, but if you couldn't find uh, your input output module here in our list, you could choose custom and connect your input output device using this custom protocol. But you should uh, check if your input output device support Modbus protocol. So if yes, then you could connect it without any problems. Also, uh, you can find it here on VIF option. We are using uh, this option to operate uh, in-built in cameras relay. It works for Axis and Hanwha cameras. Let's go back here to checkpoint. So when you connect your input output device, connect the barrier to it, then you will be able to choose to which relay, uh, which relay you want to use for open the barrier. Uh, also, you could set up uh, closing the barrier. And here you are able also to connect some inductive loops of photo sensors. Uh, so you could also use it uh, for detecting direction of the vehicle. Yes, we have in between inbuilt video analytic modules, but Photo sensor and inductive loops works in 100%. Let's go next. So also, which uh, let's talk about integration possibilities of number, okay? So all the data that we uh, collect in number, okay, could be sent to third party systems. You have uh, two possibilities how to do it. Uh, number, okay, could play role of TCB server and if you have some software which could play the role of the client, then number K could send all the data via TCP protocol. Uh, second one, number K could send all the data via HTTP protocol. So we send some JSON packages. Uh, all of these events described in our documentation. So if you need to uh, integrate number K to your system, we could create this this documentation and it could be done very easily. About integration with VMS system, uh, for this moment, uh, number K could send generic, generic events to uh, uh, WiseNet Wave uh, VMS. This is from Hanwha. And uh, we could send generic events to the network optic software, uh, to the NX Witness VMS system. Also here in integration, you are able to set up SMTP uh, server and you could set up uh, mail recipient. Uh, you could use it in, if you want to set up some reactions and send some email notification. Okay, let's, uh, so we configured our checkpoint. Yeah, here I set up some channel for the uh, enter, some channel for the exit. Uh, when I set up this feature, I will be able to switch in results to group by number top. And then I will be able to see the information with duration of staying the vehicle in our territory. So let's find some 
recognized license plate with this info and a sync. Yeah, I think for demo, I have only one camera. Yeah, and it shouldn't work properly. So I just uh, get an event uh, trying of enter. Yeah, uh, that's why I don't and do not get any information about the exiting because on my demo video, all vehicles just enter it to my to my object. And let's go to car database again. And here uh, we have some reactions. So let's talk about reaction. So as a reaction, you could set up some visual reaction. What does it mean? So the all uh, or some specific license plate will be highlighted in results with specific color. Also as a reaction, you could play some uh, sound signal. Also, you could uh, connect input output module and you could switch some relay on it. For example, you could switch uh, your traffic light. Uh, also, uh, you could choose show window. So um, we could show some pop-up window and uh, you are able to choose a send in email notification. And we get a several type of events for which you could uh, configure your reaction. For example, just for simple recognition, uh, you could set up uh, additional parameters. Uh, if some specific license plate will be recognized from some specific group, for example, from, from our uh, stolen vehicles group, uh, then I won't get some reaction as email notification and some pop-up window. So here in checkpoint, when you choose as, a, as an events from checkpoint, uh, you are able also to get a reaction when somebody uh, have some overtime in our parking area. So you could set up reaction for this event. Uh, also you able to choose uh, from which checkpoint uh, we get an event and from which group. So you have a different uh, parameters which you could combine and then get your specific reaction. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, please just uh, ask me in okay, chat. Sophie. Yeah. We, we just had a question that's a more kind of commercial one uh it is about the pricing this is a server-based software and yes we base our pricing per license on the number of channels included uh the cost uh msrp cost of the license uh for one channel smb is uh, some 840 us dollars this is for the end user recommended price and of course, we do have a structured price for the distributors, for uh, VMS vendors, for the system integrators. So please, if you are interested in your personal price offer, just uh, address us with a request. Thank you. Um, maybe we, we've got more questions. <clears throat> if not, let's go on, but feel free to ask me. Okay, uh, I was just showing about checkpoint mode. So let's switch to parking. When we switch to uh, parking mode. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yes. Sergey, we do have a question about server requirements and client requirements for the server. We do have this written in our user manual. So we could provide this information additionally, but generally how do we uh, count the requirements these are, this is like one core. So yeah, if, for example, for one channel 4K uh, resolution from for the one video stream with 4K resolution, you need to choose uh, processor with one physical core two threads and with, uh, uh, yeah. For simple calculation, that's all. One physical core with two threads. 
So if you are going to recognize your license plate and you want to use uh, eight video cameras, then you will need to choose processor with eight physical cores and two threads. And it's uh, in this case, if you also want to use 4K resolution, then in this case, you will need to choose some Intel Xeon processors. But uh, what does it mean uh, when we say, uh, one physical core with two threads. Uh, also, I, I, I forget if we mentioned or not that we could recognize uh, license plate on the speed up to 150 miles per hour. So when we uh, recommend to choose uh, some specific hardware, then it means that we test it. Yeah, and it will work with 4K resolution of camera and vehicle speed uh, could be up to 150 miles per hour. But if you have some parking, for example, and you want to use full HD camera, which 100% uh, will be exist in this case, then uh, our requirements to hardware could be much more lower. So we have some standard recommendation, yeah. Uh, but but it could be reviewed for your specific uh, condition, for example. Yeah. Uh, Sergey, we do have a question here about uh, the software. If it can cover the requirements of campus level compounds or Olympic level events, for example. Did we manage like, um, well, as far as I understand, this is like uh, a big stadium. We had these cases. And you've got like 12 or 20 entrances and exits. Mm -hmm. So can we control all of them simultaneously? Is number K uh, good enough? Because we, we've got up to 36 per one server. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we still can combine actually, right? It's not necessary just to buy a build of 36 um, channels, one license. You could do it like four, six, and then connect to one common database, correct? Yes. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So able in one number of key version, you are able to connect up to thirty six video streams. Uh, if you uh, want to use more video channels, you could use several uh, video servers, for example. And uh, in one server, we would store our database. So several number of keys could work properly with one database, for example. Uh, please write down if we answered your question. If not, uh, you could leave your email and we will contact you after the webinar for more details. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, maybe guys, you just see that uh, you're able to configure only four checkpoints here. This is just for my version because uh, I get uh, license only for two video channels. But if you will choose uh, number key version with 36 video channels, then you will be able to configure up to 16 checkpoints. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go on just a little bit more information about the parking mode. So when you choose the parking mode, then you are able to configure parking areas. So you will need to add your parking. Everything also uh, very simple. You will just need to input how many places you have in this parking. You will need to set up how many places uh, in this parking you, uh, you want to set for the vehicles, not from database, for example, for some visitors or something like this. And here you also could set up additional filters for, uh, you could allow uh, uh, date range for vehicle uh, for staying on the territory. You could also set up here some notification for the vehicle, which are uh, overstate on your parking lot. So when you configure it in results, uh, you also will be able to switch to parking. And here you will be able to see all the information with duration staying on the territory of this vehicle. And here uh, on the left 
bottom corner, you could find the information about how many free spaces on your parking you have, how many use parking spaces you have, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And also all of this information you could find in reports. Uh, um, Sergey, yep. sorry to interrupt you, but when we are speaking about the vehicle count, right, or free parking spaces, we are not sending this information outside of number K, okay, right? The uh, end user can can only see it here, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So all this information uh, available only on, in number K interface. Okay, on in, in the desktop client. Okay, yep. thank you in no QI. And guys, I think that's all about functionalities that I want to tell you about for today, about SMB and poor conversion. Oh, Serhi, uh, uh, apologies. But, yeah, yeah, but I want to tell you about some tips. Yeah, Alexandra, please. Okay, tip, tips will follow. There is a question that we mentioned for recognition zones per camera. Can vehicle be going in more than one direction? Can we make a setup with one camera for recognition zones and two zones, for example, one direction in and two zones another direction out? Uh, yes, you are able to configure it. Unfortunately, these demo videos uh, not so useful to demonstrate how to do it. But for example, let's create several zones. For example, this will be zone one and we set up our direction angle just draw right that then we could turn on other recognition zone let's configure it and set up it for example for other direction no but certainly <laughs> there will be some requirements to the camera resolution and certain requirements to the camera installation right yep Yep. and goes and so on mm -hmm. so yes you're able to set up up to four recognition zones for each zone you could set up specific direction and then in results you will get direction for this video channel and for this specific zone of recognition yeah thank you Sergei. uh if i you promised some tips yeah about tips guys uh i was talking about uh, these configuration parameters about license plate site about recognition sensitivity uh but when you turn on your number okay it already start works uh, you just will need to connect your camera set up recognition zone and leave these parameters then when you start to get your first results here in technical data you could find a real information about license plate weeds about recognition sensitivity so let's go uh, uh, here in technical uh, technical data and let's talk about these parameters what we are showing here so for example uh, let me stop my videos it will be easier because results updates every time now i stop it yeah uh, so here in technical data first number for example 25 milliseconds we this is information uh describe us how many how long we spent for the for the license plate recognition second number for example 140 pixels this is a real width for this license plate and this license plate match for our license plate recommendation. Uh, also, second parameter is uh, exactly recognition sensitivity level. So for this license plate, is uh, we show that it's 0 0.85. Uh, and this is a very good result. And when you get result with lower recognition sensitivity level for example 0 0.5 uh, then you will need to check your camera installation uh, you should match uh, uh, if your camera installed properly so uh, main scene uh, one more one more time so uh, 
our recommendation, uh, your license plate width on video stream should be more than 130 pixels. Uh, then you should check your camera installation angles. So uh, you should also check your license plate tilt on the image. Uh, we recommend you uh, set up, uh, we recommend uh, that since that your license plate in your camera image should be uh, maximal horizontal. So your uh, license plate tilt should be less than five degrees, for example. And camera installation angles, horizontal and vertical should be less than 25 degrees. So if you get here in technical data, uh, sensitivity level lower than 0 0.5, then this is uh, signals you that you should check your camera installation. Your camera installation angles, you, you even just need to check if your license plate in focused. Okay, uh, also what, which information you could find here in technical data after this uh, recognition sensitivity level, you could see how many times we exactly recognize this license plate. For example, for this license plate, we already recognized it uh, six times. And here, uh, next number, uh, 360 degrees, this is a real direction angle uh, of moving of, of this vehicle. So uh, when you move this direction angle in configuration, yeah, you could see that these numbers are changing. And for this license plate, the real direction angle is 360. Then you check several uh, recognition and you also could improve your recognition. Uh, when you change this direction direction angle here in the settings. Also, we show some additional information about the country and state. If you are using number K in different countries, you are able to see this information in technical data. And as I mentioned, uh, you could hide all of this information with technical data with, uh, if you just want to see your recognized license plate and don't want to see information about direction and etc etc you just could hide it and see only your recognized license plate and what i didn't show you uh here in settings general you also have two buttons uh you could go directly to the folder with stored screenshots so we store all screenshots separately. Let's open our folder with screenshots. And also in screenshot name, you could find all the information. So you could find the information about recognized license plate, date, time, uh, channel, and zone. Uh, we provide also the full description of screenshot name in our Data, data sheets and user manuals. So you also could find this information there. And also here you have additional button with, uh, and you could go to the folder with all expert uh, reports with recognized license plate. Uh, guys, maybe you have more questions because I think uh, this is yes. all from me for today. Yeah, uh, Sergey, uh, we've got a question. Well, chronologically, we've got two extra questions. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, one is about a remote client. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have a remote client, and what that client can do? This is a reporter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we please? have mm -hmm. we have separate way version of number K. We call it number K reporter. So it has exactly the same interface as number K, but. Uh, in number K reporter, you are not able to see the live video from the cameras, but you will be able to see results from your server region, uh, server version of number K. Uh, so yes, we have a client version. It calls number K reporter, and you could uh, connect to sub local number K and see all recognized results from it in number K reporter. 
Sergey, but uh, it cannot be done simultaneously to like 10 of number of case installed separately lo and locally. You will need to uh, to get an access like consequently, right? One by one. This is the only limitation. Yep. Okay. Right. And please, uh, please note, this is to the participants, that you can install only one license of number OK per server. Because number OK speaks to the same database. And in case you are trying to activate two licenses, it's impossible. So make sure you deactivate the previous license if you test it. Okay, uh, how about a phone app from the same participant? Uh, we do not have a phone app to number OK yet. Do we have it on the roadmap? Uh, no. Right now, no. no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, but we definitely could uh, look into the case. What is the requirement? And the other, uh, the other question that I promised to you, Sergei, uh, are any countries' license plates not covered at this point, please? Uh, maybe I will answer here, Sergei, and you will correct me if I am wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends which continent we are speaking. If we are speaking like Americas, then uh, North America Library, uh, we plan to merge it, uh, Canada and the United States by the end of the year. And we will also complement it with Mexico end of the year, or start of the following year. And this will be one common North American library. Then it will be complemented with Latin America and Central America, of course. But if we are speaking, if any country's license plates are not covered, then, uh, well, there are still some countries uh, in Africa and in Asia that are not covered. This is true. Uh, well, I think I will stop at this point. I do not think that I will need to go any further and mention any car or vehicle detection without a plate because now our algorithm is based on license plate recognition, right? Anywhere we are searching for the license plate and we say, aha, uh -huh, this is the license plate, then the area around it should be a vehicle. Let's recognize some more parameters. Serhi, anything that? Yes, Alexandra, you're absolutely right. Okay, I hope I answered. If not, please ask us more and we could answer to you after the webinar. Uh, Serhi, do you have any additional? Aha, uh -huh, Philippines, if Philippines is covered, no. Philippines is not at the moment. And it's not on our immediate roadmap, mm -hmm, unfortunately. OK, um, do we have more questions? OK. Um, Serhi, would you like to add anything? Otherwise, I will just finalize and give. Mm -hmm. uh, no, Alexandra, I think that's all for, for today, yeah. If guys, if you are interested in more technical uh, data or information, yeah, we could plan some specific technical webinar, yeah, and then I could told you about our recommendations, how to choose camera for recognition, how to properly set up it, how totally design the system uh, for the recognition. Uh, we'll talk about some tips and tricks. So just mail us and I think we could prepare some specific technical webinar. So Alexander, I think that's all from me. Good, thank you very much. Uh, just a short um, uh, kind of administ administrative announcement. After the webinar, we will send to you the link to the video, to the recorded video from the webinar. So for those who joined us later, please feel free to um, uh, to uh, review the video that you will resend via the link. Uh, just to mention that uh, for the further webinars on uh, specific installations and integrations and maybe setting how to get the best LPR, what are the critical angles and what are the critical conditions for the installations, because usually in the real life, 
we never get an ideal condition for the installation. Yes, we are planning on that. And uh, I think at the end of October, start of November, or maybe earlier, we will announce a row of webinars dedicated to different features, how to set up reactions, how to set up best LPR, uh, how you can play with the zones, etc. And of course, please stay tuned. Uh, we will advise you when we have the merge of the Canadian and United States Library, when we have Mexico added, and we will be glad to support and serve your needs. So thank you very much. We will be in touch and thank you for your time for attending our webinar. Yeah, thank, thank you. you everybody and have a nice day. Bye. Patrick, thank you. Yep. Thank you everybody for attending. Thank you. Bye-bye.